Let's start from the desktop. Here's our icon for our software. Analysis and layout. Here's the icon for the plan view that was sent to us we want to design. We're going to double click on the program. Splash screen. Nice magnum stone wall in the back. Natural limestone in the front. We want layout because we want to design the wall. We want to produce that CAD drawing in our quantities. Except the disclaimer. The program comes up. The menu over here is layout and design because we've got plan view, wall layout um, versus the analysis, which is a two dimensional design. Okay, let's go to plan view. We'll expand this full size, file, convert a PDF to an image, sample plans, what we want. It's going to come in, it's going to zoom to full screen, there you'll scale bar. Let's check our scale. Click our ruler, we measure from 0 to 60, 6.26 feet, not what we want, so we need to scale the drawing. That's 60 feet. We erase our old measuring bar up there. Click the ruler, 0 to 60, 60.00, perfect. Now the drawing is to scale. We're going to select our P-line, our polyline. And we're going to click over the wall layout. I'm just going to click to the corners here. Uh, we'll click grade points there. End of wall, double click. There's our wall layout. I've turned the bright line red. I've winded it to three so you can see it. We look, we've got more grade points here that I didn't click on. We've probably got some slopes in here. We've got the end of the parking lot. We can add points or delete points with these buttons up here in the pen. So we click on the add. I'm going to point point there. I don't have anything here. Slope, so I'm going to say you're going to start at this point, continue around, uh, probably up to this point here. Parking lot ends here, but I'm just going to carry the load up to this end point. So we're done there. We'll click on our select line. Let's get our points. I click down here, get points. I'm going to number the points. Now, if I leave this default, this is set up for a 1 to 20 scale. You can see the numbers are pretty big. They work, but you know maybe I don't want them that big, so I'm going to make them 0.5. Click the numbers again. I've got to select the line first. Number the points. They came in much smaller. Easy to read. So point zero, one, two, three, four, up through there. Click the line again. Get the points. There's a coordinates of all the points on the plan. Now we start at the lower point, the bottom of the wall, and we work our way around. 583, 581, 582.5, 589.5. 3, 582, down there. So the bottom of the wall, uh, top of the wall is 578, bottom of the wall is 577. I've got a corner at point number two. It's an outside corner. I've got another point, outside corner at point number three, and another outside corner at point number five. That defines my geometry. The last thing we can do. We'll select the line, we'll say plot coordinates, and what this does is, if I zoom in on it, minimize that, at every point it gives you the station, it's 112.7 feet from the end, the top was 581.5, the bottom was 571.5. Great way to check your numbers, good way for somebody else to go back and check you, that the input matches what's on the drawing. That part looks good. Now we are going to go bring our input form back up and we're going to send it to the drawing. Now we go to wall layout. There's all the input points you had. Now we want to look at slopes above or below the wall. Live load above and below the wall. We go back here. Pretty level through here. I do get a slope in this area. What is a slope? Let me measure out. If I go out uh, 
say about there, 18 feet, and it drops one to uh, two feet. Go back to well layout. Slope length was 18, drop two, it's a 6.3 degree slope. And that started at station 74. So 74, it's right here, toe slope, um, 6.3 degrees, 18 feet long. And I say I don't have a bench below the wall. Come to my next point. At 127, the slope's a little bit steeper. It'll come out there, looks like about six and a half feet, and it's dropping one, two feet. Looks like kind of a two to one slope in here. And that's at station 112. So I go back here, station 112. Uh, call it seven feet, drop two feet. 15 degree slope. So we'll call it 16, it goes out 8 feet, and 0. You come up here, probably at this station, the slope looks like it levels out there. So at 156, no slope. 156, no toe slope. And this is going to carry all the way to the end of the wall. 74, we said we had toe slope. 35 we don't, so we'll put a zero as we lead into it. What the slope will do, it'll gradually go from zero up to whatever the slope was here as it transitions between the two. Surcharge loads. Uh, we've got a parking lot behind the wall. Comes around, and I'm going to say it goes all the way up to station 212. Wall well, layout. It's a parking lot. I'm going to put 150 pounds, 3 foot offset, 50 foot wide all the way up to station 211. At 211, my lag load goes to zero. So it will carry the surcharge all the way through here, stop it at this point, and coming around the end. That's our surcharges, that's our slopes. Let's look at our default input data. I'm kind of a silty sand material, a little bit of a cohesion in the base. I'm gonna leave the others at zero. Uh, 5.4 degree batter for the block. Pre-program, 6-inch leveling pad, 6-inch of embedment, 10% base to height ratio. I'm going to design for slope embedment. For a 3 to 1 slope is H over 10, 2 to 1 slope is H over 7. We'll input those, we'll put the checkpoint. Uh, I want the circles, I, uh, the points a little larger. And we're going to offset it 5 feet from the top of the wall. We'll see that. You don't have any seismic. 60% base to height, 4 foot minimum grid. 2.67 maximum spacing. The program is going to default to two times the block depth, so it will default to two feet. So we come back here. We'll shrink that screen down. I'll put it over here. Let's draw the wall. This is checking. I did my surcharge loads. I did my slopes. This isn't seismic. We're good to go. We're designing the wall. And there's the wall design. We can zoom in on it. We've got 10 foot grids through here, stuck another nine feet. Uh, as we've got a slope in front of the wall, our embedment increased from six inches to, uh, looks like 10 inches to a foot as we come around there. Top of wall, we've got a little step as we come around the corner. We step down, we grade back up. Let's look here in the corner. Remember our slope started over here at this corner. Increase the most at this corner outside and then decrease as we came back up here. And you see that our embedment is increasing and decreasing both with height and with the slope. So we go to station 112. Station 112. There's our geometry. There's a slope down below the wall. There's a surcharge above the wall. We can look at global stability, 1.5, we're good. Remember, this slope was short. It was only about six feet, went out the property line. Um, so we're modeling just what we're seeing in there. 
We can go back to static results. We can go back to the very first section of the wall. Now, if anything is not correct in this table, these first rows will be highlighted. Also, anything down here will say no good. We can just step through the wall. If everything's looking good. You know, if we want to stretch this across, we can see more of the table. But everything meets the design. 74, up there. Yeah, we're good. 112, 141. Remember, this will highlight yellow if anything is wrong in the table. Say I typed this one on the, and my top grid is short. Highlights that are red to show you there is a problem. We can go back to we lengthen that, lengthen that grid back out. Go to the end of the wall. Yeah, everything's looking good. We can shrink that down a little bit. Go back up to our view here. You know, what we like to do when we come across is I don't like to see the grids jumping so much 8 foot, 9 foot, 10 foot. We could expand those grids out and even them up. If I go to the right, uh, right here, we go to station 113. Uh, 113. This looks good. I like to see a grid two down from the top, preferably two up from the bottom of the slope, I'm going to leave it down there. But I want to extend those grids over so they're level. Uh, I can either go to the next section and I could uh, go to static design. I can remove that bottom grid. Control delete. There we go. I've removed that bottom grid. Now if I update design, see everything moves across. If I wanted the grids the same length, I could have come back to this station, 112. These are 10 foot. I hit the right button up here, and that will update it. And we can just move across. So eventually, um, not taking too much time, I can go down here to station 191 and do the same thing. 191, I can move the grids up, update the view things line up, we can move the grids up and down, get the draw like we want it. Say we're done with the drawing, we can go, we can look at our quantities. And this counts the blocks themselves, the label, so we've got 188 cap units, 1840 wall units, and I got four half blocks, half blocks being at the end of the wall we're stepping up here. Total of 1,936 square feet. We add some contingency to the walls. And there's a 282 feet in length and calf length, 2,000 square feet. Our geogrid, and this is all Stratigrid 200 through here, 847 square yards. There's the contingency there would be the total. If we look down on this table, that one foot of stone behind the unit is 68.6 cubic yards. And the backfill material is about 573. We've got our quantities. We can now print our estimate with the elevation view. But let's say before I just do that, um, we didn't do the project information, but we can say uh, trial project, your initials, um, the state, home location. Give us some information. I need to update the designs so that goes in the record. We go back here, we print our estimate. Long view. There we go. There's our wall. There's our elevation points printed out. There's the name of our project, the designer, location, location. If you put it in, elevation view, your input properties, your leveling pad. Here's the block count, the number of units, the number of square feet. Here's your grid, total square yards. There's a table of fill zone, those two numbers we talked about. Text of what the program is doing. There's your input data. Print that to a PDF, print it to the printer, send it out. If we now save our file, this is this 
the analysis is a two-dimensional. This is a design. So we save our design. I'm going to put it up on the desktop. And I'm going to call it sample design. The file is saved. If I shrink the file is saved. And it's actually on the other desktop. So there's that. And there's the AutoCAD file that it, it that was a lot of details we just ran through. It took a little longer than I wanted, but um, it really shows what you can do here. We import the, the drawing, we copy off the wall, we input our surcharge load, our soils, our block type, we draw the wall. Ends up we have a full quantity takeoff and a full AutoCAD drawing ready to go to the contractor or ready to go to AutoCAD and put some details on it. So save a lot of time. Wall like this we should be able to do in about 15-20 uh, minutes in and out. So it saves a lot of time. It's worth looking at. Give me a call to get the software and I'm sure that uh, you'll like it. Thanks.